Hello again, I am Blunty, and I'm about to teach you how to save your future by enslaving the past. I know it all sounds kind of dramatic, melodramatic even, but if I'd introduced this video with the dry details about how I'm going to show you how to make a massive, and I mean massive, personal backup machine, a network attached storage system, a home media server, or even your own personal cloud storage using whatever old PC hardware you might have laying around, well, we do live in a world where the YouTube attention spans have been retarded by the TikTok tiny brain generation, so I gotta get a little bit melodramatic just to snap up your attention, don't I? It is World Backup Day, or at least it is if everything went to plan, and this video was uploaded on March 31st. I figure that'd be an appropriate day for this project, because, well, that's what I need to do. Be a backup machine. So, let's frame this all up. There are two ways I'm going to show you today how to gear up with a personal home media streamer, uh, backup service, or indeed your own remotely accessible cloud storage, free of the privacy concerns, by the way, and ongoing costs of web-based services. The cloud, after all, just being a marketing-friendly way of explaining to idiots that you're using someone else's computer that you don't own and you don't have any control over. And I don't know about you, but I like owning and controlling the hardware that looks after my files. And for all this, I'll be using two of these eye-wateringly massive 18 terabyte drives from Seagate. They originally came in for a project I'd planned to do about a special kind of hard drive based cryptocurrency mining thing, but then the arse end fell all the way out of that, as it always does inevitably with crypto crap sooner or later, so new plan. Sorry to Seagate, by the way, who supplied me with two of these drives and for me taking way longer to do something with them than I'd planned. Eh. Anyway, the second of the two ways I'm showing you will be in everything but the hard drive is free do-it-yourself way, but the first way is the fast and easy way, an off-the-shelf, ready-to-run solution. For five years now, I've been using a DS916 Plus, a device from Synology. Inside is a basic bitch four-core low-power Intel Pentium N3710, backed by eight gigabytes of less than impressively quick RAM, but it's not supposed to be running a desktop or gaming, so it doesn't need to be super duper powerful. It just keeps four large disk drives doing whatever the hell I want them to be doing, including being my personal home media server where I store and stream my perfectly legal DVD backups of Star Gate and the like, for convenience, don't you know? It's powerful enough for H.264 and H.265 video transcoding on the fly up to 4K and runs my media server right on board and I use Plex for that. I also use it for network storage and backups. I've got two drives for my media, two drives for the other stuff, each pair formatted as two separate logical drives. For the less technically minded, that just means it presents each pair of drives as a single unified storage drive to any other machine that connects to it. It can also support several different kinds of RAID systems. Again, for the tech newbies, RAID is just a standardized way of using multiple drives as one drive, like I just talked about, in a way that either makes two smaller drives look like one huge drive, or in a way that shares the exact same data across multiple drives to either speed up access or ensure your data is safe if one drive in the array fails, because they all spread across the data. It can get more complicated than that, but that's the basics. The Synology disk station is quiet, absolutely reliable, and never needs fussing with outside of the occasional need to update the Plex server I use. Installs configuration and maintenance all done through a web interface, which is very, very friendly, easy to use, and well, deliberately desktop-like. And if you're in need of a superb solution for any of the purposes I've mentioned so far, get one. This specific model is no longer out there because I've been using it five years, it's been replaced by now, but its family series is still going strong. The Synology has been 100% reliable for me, running all day, every day, for more than five years. Can't ask for a better endorsement than that when it comes to reliability. I'll link a few current models in the down below. The only real issue with this solution is they're not what you would call inexpensive because they are basically specialized headless PCs and they are designed for running all the time at superb reliability, so it's an investment. The second solution is the DIY, the hobbyist solution, the bespoke solution. You can use pretty much whatever old PC parts you have lying around, Intel, AMD, full-size desktop, even an old laptop can be put to new use. Basically, pretty much anything up to and about a decade old or so should be perfectly fine and useful for this. 
You can even do this with one of those basic single board computers like the Raspberry Pi, although attaching a full-sized hard drive to one of those is a bit more of a fuss, usually requiring some sort of external USB enclosures for the drives and cables and stuff. It's doable, but uh, more clumsy. Whatever hardware you're using, I strongly recommend, strongly recommend, new hard drives, not secondhand or old ones from your old machines or whatever. The purpose here is backup and long-term reliability. And a mechanical hard drive has a finite life. They wear out and become less reliable with age and use. So go in smart and buy new drives. Also, buy something fit for purpose. I'm using a pair of Seagate drives, as I mentioned. Specifically, they're the Ironwolf NAS drives. They even recently launched a brain-melting 20 terabyte capacity version. But they do run all the way down to a still pretty meaty 4 terabyte apiece. The ones I have here, thanks very much again, Seagate, are the 18 terabyte monsters. Yummy. The Seagate Ironwolf NAS drives are specifically designed for the kind of workload we're building for here. Always on, always accessible lives. Designed tough, designed reliable, dependable. Whether you're using them for constantly shifting huge amounts of data across your network or intermittent backups. These are the best choice. You certainly can absolutely use a regular bog standard desktop hard drive if you like, if that's all you have the budget for. They'll just have a shorter long-term lifespan overall. But if you've room in the budget, drives like this are absolutely the way to go for reassuring feelings of dependability. You don't have to go Seagate if you don't want to. I like them, but other manufacturers make similar NAS type drives as well. But outside of the drives, again, you can use almost anything you have to hand hardware-wise. This rig I'm building runs on a Ryzen 3 3200G from the era three years back. It's a four core, four thread CPU with an RX Vega 8 GPU built in. It's on a Gigabyte GAAB350N gaming Wi-Fi motherboard from 2017 or so, I think. Got a couple of 8 gigabyte sticks of HyperX Predator memory, although for this purpose, that amount of memory and that style of memory is pretty much overkill, but it's what I had sitting spare, which is kind of the point here, using spare parts, giving them a new life. We're recycling stuff we have no other practical use for anymore, or as a millennial might put it, we're upcycling. God damn it, I hate that word. Word of warning. If you're using a Ryzen APU like I am, it's likely you also need an NVIDIA GPU if only for the initial setup. We'll be using a lightweight Linux distribution specifically designed for network attached storage and backup duties and the like. And in my case, even though the 3200G has been around for years and it has a built-in GPU, it turns out that Linux somehow is still so miserably and stupidly built it can't use an AMG APU graphics properly for install. It took me a while to problem solve this, a nice sort of gotcha, big pain in the ass actually, a couple of wasted hours growling at bits of silicon before I figured that one out. To the way the Linux nerds can to gush about Linux, I figured it would just work. No. But I slammed in an old GTX 1050 I had lying around to, just to get things set up. Once it was set up, I took out the Nvidia GPU and it could use the APU GPU just fine. APU GPU. The built-in GPU. Like I said, this specific Linux distro is made very deliberately for this kind of use. It's also designed to run headless, that is, without a monitor or even so much as a keyboard or mouse attached. Instead, after install, everything else is done remotely from a web interface. You just kind of log into from across your home network or from another computer elsewhere, just like my Synology NAS works. The one I'm using is called Open Media Vault. I won't run through the specific installation instructions here. This isn't really a tutorial after all. Those are detailed more or less usefully through more official sources. I'll link to those down below as well, of course. There's also a couple of other similar solutions out there as far as Linux distros go. I'll link them in the down below also so you can make your own choices about that. Frankly, it's a bit of a pain to get it all up and running if you're not already neck deep in Linux crap. But once it is up and running, it's also very clean and very specifically crafted for exactly this kind of work. So it works really well. So you push through the typical Linux annoyances and once it's up and running, you'll ideally never have to think about it ever again. It'll just keep going and doing its job in the background, buried in a corner or under a desk somewhere, and you never have to think about it ever again. Once up and running, it's pleasantly clean interface, although not as good as Synology's own similarly Linux and web-based interface combination. In my opinion, in every way, the Synology experience is superior, except for price. From the web UI, you do your configuring, you can set up as backup device or a media hub or whatever. If you want to use it as a media hub and you want to use Plex or another similar media client, you'll install that separately. But if you want to use this for a network attached storage, 
or backup, you're basically ready to go immediately. You can also set it up for automatic and smartly incremental backups, either of an entire machine or just specific drives, or even just specific folders on specific drives. It is highly configurable. You can, of course, do things like set it to run a complete backup every time or just an incremental backup, so it just updates things that have changed and things like that. You can basically do all the things you should expect to be able to do with a very flexible backup or network storage device. And again, of course, once you've set it to task, you can just bury the machine somewhere and let it do its work silently and invisibly for years to come. As a solution for my needs, I think I'll stick with the off-the-shelf Synology NAS for my main needs, but as a project, this is both interesting and useful to work through. But the build is, hasn't been a wasted experience. I'm going to use that for other projects. I've already got a couple in mind. Uh, but I'm gonna move those 18 terabyte Ironwolf drives to my NAS instead. Its largest drive capacity stands at eight terabytes, so a lot of an upgrade. But I've always wanted to give the DIY path a try at least, so here we are. And yeah, I think it is a practical solution. The DIY path is not a solution I'd recommend for building from new bought parts, however, because chances are you'll be better off price and certainly easiness wise with an off the shelf NAS unit plus with the off-the-shelf one, you get warranty and support. But if you've got some PC hardware you've retired or are replacing, or enjoy a good eBay bargain hunt even, your costs drop dramatically to basically hard drive only. And again, I really do strongly recommend buying new parts for the hard drives. Like I mentioned, other brands have similar offerings in this space to the Seagate drive that I've been using here. You don't have to use the Seagate ones I've been talking about here. Just use what you have confidence in. But there's also a reason in my own NAS, I personally use Ironwolf drives for my backup partitions already because I trust them. They've demonstrated their reliability. So thanks for watching. I am Blunty. I will see you next time. Tell me in the down below if you've made it to the end of the video, what is your personal backup solution? You do backup, right? <sighs> there are two types of people. People who regularly backup and people who haven't lost massive amounts of data yet. And I say this tempting face because there are things in my various systems that I don't regularly back up. It's just certain things I do back up. So uh, let's um, touch some wood on that one. <laughs> Thanks as always to the patrons, of course, as well. Catch you next time.